Keep in mind tonight, charities that are very bad, among the worst, in fact, at putting your donations to work for the people who actually need it. They are, however, as you've seen in our reporting over the years, very good at some other things, namely making questionable claims about the work that they say they do with your money and giving reporters the runaround. Now, over and over, our Drew Griffin, along with our partners at the Tampa Bay Times and the Center for Investigative Reporting, have exposed these questionable charities. He tried last night, Drew Griffin did, following what some of these outfits claim were tens of millions of dollars in medical supplies all the way to Guatemala. Well, tonight, a rare chance to actually look at some of their books, keeping them honest. In 2010 and 2011, if you believe the paperwork, 15 American charities sent $47 million worth of medicines and other donations to Guatemala, most unloaded here at one of the country's two main ports a journey that began here in South Carolina and a business called Charity Services International, whose president, Roy Tidwell, told us back in 2012 gathering and sending charitable goods is all he does. We send on behalf of our charities out mm -hmm. to these organizations. We just handle the shipping. But in hundreds of internal records from Charity Services International, those millions in donations show a disturbing pattern. Identical shipments claimed to be sent by several charities and all for the exact same amount. Take a look. Four identical donations here down to the nickel, $2,007,902.05. The four American charities claiming credit for sending the donations, all listed by their initials. The Breast Cancer Society, the Children's Cancer Fund of America, Cancer Fund of America, and Breast Cancer Charities of America. All the donations to Guatemala and all to a small charity there called the Order of Malta. The shipper said it was actually one huge donation the charity split four ways. If that sounds suspect, it's why we went to Guatemala searching for any signs of a huge medical ship. Estamos buscando de office de Order of Malta or even evidence that a charity or a hospital or even a clinic down here received charitable goods. We came up empty. The charities wouldn't talk to us, and that includes the head of the Breast Cancer Society, who last year gave us the finger. Hi, hi. Stop a second. No, where are you going, Mr. Reynolds? Mr. Reynolds, where are you taking off? The question is, how can these little-known charities take tax credit for shipping millions of dollars in medicines to Guatemala? It's all in the backdoor brokering of non-cash donations, what charities call gifts in kind. Critics call that an easy way for pretty bad charities to look pretty good by overvaluing their donations. How? Tom Tig was disgusted when he found out. He runs a reputable medical charity called Direct Relief. From his warehouse in California, he supplies free medicines to rural clinics in the U.S., to disasters overseas, to almost any medical relief team that needs medicines. It's all free. He says when he had leftover medicines, he sent it to another charity so they could find a good use for it. The value of the medicines he sent? Three million dollars. Within the week, he had a thank you letter for his one hundred million dollar donation. You personally know that is true. Right. Well, we've seen examples, including with products that we have given and assigned a value to, which we know is correct, um, and then seen it uh, in the handoff to another charitable organization be revalued at uh, as many as, I don't know, 40 times higher, which is absurd. Tig tracked down what happened and found a man named Cliff Feldman, a broker who lives in Florida, was working with Charity Services International in that South Carolina warehouse and, according to these emails, was getting paid $2,500 each time he handled the paperwork. And the paperwork, says Tig, was disturbing. And the reason to make it appear bigger is to make them appear like they're doing more good. That's the only thing I can think. I mean, you know, we've been at this for 65 years at Direct Relief. We've never been the largest one. We take a very conservative approach to these things. These are medications that people are going to ingest um, for their health. So uh, there's no point in getting clever with anything, including how it's valued for the purposes of appearing to the outside world. Tig cut all ties with Feldman. So have other charities who no longer have any faith in how he places values on donated goods. 
What's Feldman's answer to all this? Mr. Feldman, Drew Griffin with CNN. I called and left a message from Guatemala. I'm now standing outside the uh, gates of your community. Not surprisingly, the man who helped all these charities with their accounting lives here, inside a gated community of expensive homes in South Florida. And no, he is not talking. As for the shipping company, a law enforcement source says Charity Services International is under investigation. Roy Tidwell, who runs the company, says he did pay Feldman for his services, but that it is up to individual charities to put values on their own donations, which again raises the question why all four of our charities sending aid to Guatemala came up with the same value of goods down to the nickel. Remember, two million seven thousand nine hundred two dollars and five cents but an even bigger question remains where is it in a country filled with people desperate for help fifty million dollars in donated medicines is nowhere to be found it's just unbelievable Drew joins us now you never found any evidence that the fifty million dollars in medicine was ever even sent to Guatemala I mean can these can these charities get in trouble if in fact there never was a donation Trying to hold these charities accountable is very difficult for the IRS, for state governments. They're very labor-intensive, complex, time-consuming investigations, and often because the laws are so lax, Anderson, the best you can do on the other side of this is maybe get a fine. So until now, we have not seen many charities being prosecuted or, or really even investigated. So, I mean, it boils down to what, just donor beware? Until now, yes, donor beware, but... That could be changing after all this news we've been generating on this. Several attorneys general from across the country are beginning to tell us, you know what, enough is enough. They're trying to figure out a way to stop these bad charities from pandering for our money only to use that money, Anderson, for everything but charity.